When it comes to Trello, using labels the right way can have a massive impact on leveraging your productivity. And if you're not using labels at all, this is an easy addition to get the most out of your existing boards. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use labels from beginner to advanced and give you my top three label tips for boosting your productivity. Let's get into it. With any Trello board, you're gonna have lists and cards, but what cards don't start off with is labels. Click on the three dots on the right in the corner to access the menu. From there, click more, and then you can see labels button. Here we can see all of the labels on this board that are available. With each color, create a title for the label to signify what it's for. So let's go ahead and start adding some labels. To the right of each one of these colors, you can see a small pencil icon. Clicking on this will allow you to edit the title. Click on the pencil, and now I can give the green label a name. Now there are a ton of different ways to break this up. You can break these up by different departments of your business, so green could be marketing, marketing and then hit save. Yellow could be sales department and then you could hit save. And then orange could be HR and red could be finance. This is one possible way to break up your labels. Another way you could name your labels is by priority level. So red could mean urgent and then hit save. And then medium priority can be orange and then hit save. And then finally green could be like low priority and then hit save. This way you can set up an entire traffic light system that's easily recognizable that allows you to see what is most urgent and important. Now, if you wanna change the color of one of the labels, click on the pencil icon again, right below the name and select a color. There are a ton of different colors and it's really up to you on how you wanna color code all of your labels. Once you pick the new color, hit save, and then you can see it's changed into the new color. Another feature in this menu is that you can search labels in the case that you give them a title. You can click on the search bar and then enter what label you're looking for. And Trello will go ahead and filter that out. And you're not limited to just these labels. If you click on create a new label, you get a pop-up where you can pick the title and color and then click create. As you can see, there are a lot of customizations with labels as far as creating your own. Now let's go ahead and apply labels to the cards themselves. I have a ton of cards here without labels, and then you can go and add these labels directly by clicking into the card. So I'll click right into the card, and then I wanna add a label to this one. Now, right on the top of the menu, you can see the labels button on the right. Click on that and a labels menu will pop up. It's essentially the same menu that we're working off before. Now you can click right on the label and you're gonna be able to apply the label to that card. Let's add the marketing label to this card. I'll click on the marketing label so you can see it has been added to the top of the card. Once the label has been added to the card, you can see the plus button appear. And this is a quick add button to allow you to quickly add another label to the card. So if you want to change the label or add a second label, click the plus button and now a menu will pop up and you can add and remove and create new labels for this card. So let's go ahead and add a second label. Now you can see there are two labels listed on this card and you can also add as many labels as you want to the card. Let's say you want to remove a label. You can click on the labels right in the card and then a menu will pop up. From there, just click on the label you wanna remove and you will see this check mark disappear. Once that is clicked, you can just see on the label that I clicked is no longer on the card. Now there are a few label shortcuts that you should know that are gonna help you quickly apply labels faster. Shortcut number one, and this is the fastest way to add a label. This shortcut can be used when your cursor is hovering over a card. Let's say we wanna quickly add a label to the card without opening the card itself. Now you can hover the cursor over the card and you can see a little pencil icon appear. That will bring up a mini menu and then click labels and that will bring up your labels menu. And then you can go from there and just edit the label. Shortcut number two. Now there's an even faster shortcut to edit labels. With this shortcut, all you have to do is hover over the card and hit L on your keyboard. This will quickly bring up the labels menu. From there, you can add and edit any labels that you want. If you're adding and editing a ton of labels at once, this shortcut can save you a ton of time. So let's do this one more time. If I go to the card, I want to add a label, I'll hover over the card and hit L on my keyboard and then select the label I want to apply to this card. Now this is the last shortcut for adding labels and this one comes into handy when you get comfortable with your labels. Now let's go back to the labels menu so I can explain how this works. So the labels are in order and by default, Trello comes in this order. Green is first, yellow is second, 
orange is third, and so on. This is the default order given by Trello for a new board. And the number keys on your keyboard respond to the labels. So green equals one, yellow equals two, orange equals three, and so on. So if I was to go and hover over a card and hit one, it will apply the green label to the card. If I hover over a card and press two on my keyboard, it will apply a yellow label to the card. And this will continue so on and so forth down the list. As you can see, the reference numbers are here for you. So let's test this out and add some labels with the numbers on the keyboard. Let's say I wanna add a green label to the card. I'll hover over the card and hit one on my keyboard. And as you can see, the label has been applied. Now let's go to another card, hover over the card and hit three and that label has been applied. Once you get comfortable with all your labels and the order of those labels, this is the fastest way to apply them. Now, if you want to remove a label, you can do this using the same process. If you wanna remove the green label that I pressed one to add, just hover over the card again and press one again, and you can see the label has been removed. As you get comfortable with labels, you might wanna take time to memorize the most common labels that you use. There are two different views when it comes to labels. There's a collapse view and a text view. If you click directly on the label, it will expand or minimize the name that you gave it. This comes into handy when you're working with a ton of labels or a team and you might not have every color label memorized. All you have to do is click on the label itself and you can see the labels will expand and minimize for the entire board. Also, the shortcut for this is if you click the semicolon button on your keyboard, it will expand or minimize the labels for the entire board. The next customization is colorblind friendly mode. So if you click on the card and pull up the label menu, you can see the button called Enable Colorblind Friendly Mode. If you click on that, you can see some shapes and patterns are applied to the labels that will help you further distinguish the labels from one another. To disable this, go back to the labels menu and click on Disable Colorblind Friendly Mode and your board will return to the default view. So now that you know how to add, edit, and remove labels, let's get into some strategy and use cases. Number one, like I mentioned before, is the traffic light system for a priority. Let's say you have a ton of tasks and you wanna be able to differentiate them based on how much priority they have. You can create a priority label system. So let's go back to the label menu and create three different labels. Let's start off with red for high priority projects. So anytime there's red applied to that task or project, your team will know that it needs immediate attention and is top on their to-do list. From there, medium priority is yellow and this is something that should be kept top of mind but is not necessarily the highest urgency to get things done. The last label is the green label which is low priority so these tasks can be finished later on in comparison to the orange and red higher priority tasks. Now I can go back to the board and add the priority labels to these cards. As you can see, all of the cards have now been added with priority. The second use case would be like a department theme for your business. One of the use cases for this label I use is to break up my business into different departments using labels. Most of the businesses out there maybe are made up of a few different departments or buckets. One could be a marketing department, two could be a sales department, three could be human resources or HR, four could be operations, and five could be like a finance department. And you can go ahead and add each department in with your own business. That's the second use case. Third use case would be using some type of priority matrix. So there's the Eisenhower priority matrix. If you're not familiar with it, I'll pull up the graphic. There's four different quadrants. If something is important and urgent, do it. If something is important and not urgent, we're gonna plan it. If something is urgent and not important, we're gonna delegate it. And if something is not urgent and not important, we're gonna delete it all together. You can use labels for each one of these categories in the priority matrix. This is very helpful when sorting through a ton of tasks and projects so that you don't run into decision fatigue. Also, if you have a board with a ton of ideas on it, this can help you sort them out very easily. The last use case in this is to mix and match the labels. In this case, you can use the department labels along with urgency labels. For the labels, we can select the department and then select the priority or urgency level. That way, if you're working with a team, you can easily communicate and identify who needs to do what and how urgent that task is. 
Just remember, you're not limited to using one single label scheme. As you build out your board with a ton of cards and labels, it can become somewhat overwhelming, or maybe you just wanna look at one department or one high priority task. The solution here is a filtering cards. And one of the best ways to filter cards is by label. To do this, go to the top right of your screen and click filter. That will open up a menu and at the bottom, you can see the labels option. This will display a few labels that you can click on. If you click on the box, you can only see the cards with that label displayed. So if you wanted to display high priority tasks, you can do that by clicking on the high priority label. Now, if the label you want isn't listed, click on the select labels dropdown and you can see all of your labels that you've created are now visible. From there, you can click on any label or labels that you want to filter for your entire board. And I can't emphasize how helpful this feature is. Now at the bottom, you have two different options in terms of criteria. One is any match. So the card has one or more of these qualities checked above, it will show. And then the second option is an exact match. So we'll only display cards that have all of the criteria that you check. Now, if you want your board to return to normal, just go back to the filter button and click on the X and you can see all of the filters have been cleared. Outside of just labels, there's another way to help distinguish between cards and that's the use of card covers. To apply a card cover, start by opening a card and on the right side, click on the cover button. Once you click on the button and the menu will appear with a few different options on how you wanna modify your cover. With this menu, you can pick from a color, a stock picture, or upload your own image. As you can see, you have a ton of different options when it comes to customization. With cover customizations, you can also pick the size. With the size, you can do a strip of color at the top or you can have the color fill the entire card. So let's pick a color and now it enables us to pick a size. So let's pick green and now you can see the cover has been applied to the top of the card. And if I exit out of the card, you can see the strip of color has been added to the card itself. Now I'm gonna go back into the card and select cover, but the button is now moved to the top right corner. So click on that and we can select the second option which will fill the entire card with color. Now you won't see the difference within the card, but when you exit out of the card, you will see the difference. Now you can see the entire card is filled with color and the text is bold. This is really gonna make your card stand out. Now where this is really gonna come into handy is if you wanna break your list up into sections. This is great for creating a header at the top of a Trello list as well. The only downside to it is that it won't show other card details on the front of the card, such as checklists, due dates, and so on. To remove the cover, all you have to do is click on the card, click on the cover and select remove cover and the card returns to normal. Now you can select images for your cards as well. If you click on cover and go to image selection, you can see there are a ton of stock photos where you can search for what you're looking for or you can upload your own image as well. There are a ton of different ways to personalize and make cards stand out. Now, one last tip before we wrap up this video, which is the secret label. There's one more secret label that you can create for your boards. These labels won't be visible on your board, but they will help if you wanna filter certain cards. That's where you're gonna apply this type of label that's gonna be in the label menu. What you're gonna do to apply this type of label is to go to the label menu and select create a new label. From there at the bottom, you have the option to remove color. That will essentially make the label invisible and you won't show up in the front of your cards. From there, you can add your title in for the label. Once everything is set, click create. Now let's go ahead and apply the secret label to a few cards. Once they are applied, you aren't gonna see any difference on the front of the cards, but if you open the card, you can see the secret label is still there. If you click on the filter button, the menu will pop up, and then if you select filter by your secret label, you can see all of the cards with the secret label appear. This is great for adding labels and not having your board cluttered with a ton of different colors. Again, this is just another great way to label cards. If you can master all of these features, you'll be an advanced Trello user when it comes to labels. But I wanna ask you a question of the day. What questions do you have when it comes to Trello labels and how you can use them for your workflow? Let me know in the comment section below. Now, if you're looking to deep dive into other Trello features, I have an entire Trello playlist and I'll link it in the card above and the description below. If you can master even the basic features of Trello, it can save you hours. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and until next time, stay productive.